We're going to use the graph to the right to answer the questions. And if you look at the graph, I'm going to trace the graph in purple right here. And you'll notice that these numbers down here tell you the dimensions of the window that you're looking at. So negative 10 is back here. Positive 10 is over here. This means that each tick mark is 1. So for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then the other numbers tell you the dimensions going up and down. So we have negative 100 is down here. Positive 100 is up here. And then each tick mark is worth 10 going up or down. Okay, and that makes sense because we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. All right, so the first two questions, they say, list the zeros with even multiplicity and then list the zeros with odd multiplicity. So I'm gonna identify all my zeros. I'm gonna put them in purple. Now remember, your zeros are your x intercepts so it's wherever this graph touches the x-axis and we could see that it touches right here and it touches right here and it touches right here all right so that is going to be at negative two and one two at three four five and at six okay so my zeros are going to be negative two three and six now, do those have even or odd multiplicity? Remember that odd multiplicity is going to cross and even multiplicity would touch and turn around, okay? It would bounce off, boing, like that. And you'll notice that all of these cross. So all three of these have an odd multiplicity because they cross through the x-axis. So would zeros have an even multiplicity? None. And what zeros have odd multiplicity? Well, let's list them. We have negative two, we have three, and we have six. Now the last question says to write an equation for the graph using the smallest exponents possible. Okay, so my equation is gonna be, let's make it a function, the f of x. And now remember, if these are the zeros, they all come from factors. So the factor that I would have here is x plus 2. The factor that I would have here is x minus 3. And the factor that I would have here is x minus 6. Okay, so I'm going to use these factors, x plus 2, x minus 3, and x minus 6. All right, the exponent has to be, in this case, odd. And they want me to use the smallest exponents possible. So the smallest odd number is just one. The smallest odd number here is one, and the smallest odd number here is one. So I don't need to actually write the ones. The one is understood. And then the other thing that we have to make sure of is in the front, does it get a plus one or does it get a minus one? Okay, and that, that is gonna be determined by the n behavior. All right, so down here we have our four possible n behaviors. And if you look at the graph, you notice that it falls to the left and rises to the right. Okay, the one that falls to the left and rises to the right is this one, which is a positive one x to the third. So it's odd and it's positive. So we do not need a negative one. We would need a positive one right here in our function. And of course, one, positive one times anything is just itself. So we actually don't need to write this, it's understood. And so our answer, using the smallest exponents, would be f of x is x plus two times x minus three times x minus six. And now the last part, asks us what is the y-intercept. So, hey class, how do you find a y-intercept? And the answer is that you plug in zero for x. So we're gonna take our equation, 
everywhere where we see an x we're going to put in a zero. So we want to find the f of zero, which is going to be zero plus two times zero minus three times zero minus six. All right, and that is two times negative three times negative six. Put that in your calculator and you will get a positive 36. That's the y-intercept. Now let's make sure that this makes sense. We go back to our graph and we want to see if the y-intercept is at 36. So we notice that our y-intercept is right here. 10, 20, 30, 40. It's in between 30 and 40. It's closer to the 40. So I will believe that this is 36.